All right, hello folks, uh, this is Mr. Bruss. Uh, this is a demonstration video for the elevator state machine. Uh, when you complete your uh, preliminary design work and you are ready to go to the um, uh, setup and get everything loaded to your FPGA board, um, this is what your setup should look like. And I'm just gonna run through this on video so you have an idea of how this works. And here's the components that you need. Uh, first of all, you will need your Fisher Technics kit that is set up. Uh, somebody, you or your partner, should have built that already. Um, and that kit should be fully wired and ready to go. And what you can do with that, and if you can see here, you have an open switch, a closed limit switch, and then an open limit switch. And those switches can all be wired together. The positive end of those switches will go to uh, GPIOs on the FPGA board. Meanwhile, the grounds can go... Um, they can be grounded together and then the final ground goes into the FPGA board. Uh, you'll need a 9 volt power supply and this is one of our classroom power supplies set to 9 volts. Um, that gets wired in, the power will get wired in and if you follow the power here I have it wired to a separate bank. There's the power and the power will jump over to this chip here and you'll have to consult the data sheet. It's a L293 chip uh, that chip is a motor driver and what that does is it uh, it's an input and output device um, the inputs from the FPGA board will drive the outputs and that's exactly what powers if you follow, follow back to the motor uh, those two motor wires okay uh, down to the FPGA board you've used this before this needs to be programmed using Xilinx on your computer um, and then what we're doing is we're really using all aspects of it uh, we're using the breadboard portion, which is where uh, your motor driver chip goes into. And then we're also using some switches. We're going to use one of the push button switches, in this case, push button zero. Uh, we're using the clock here, and I've got the clock uh, at the mid level. And if you look here, oops, a little bit too close. Uh, see, I've got the rotary clock wired into a GPIO, GPIO zero, uh, to provide us with that clock for our state machine. And then finally down here I've got labeled uh, my door open and door close LED lights that are going to come on when this thing runs. So um, that in hand, um, you, you should also have your wiring diagram to put this together and uh, you also will need a data sheet for the L293 chip and with that, uh, all of those things you should be able to put together the elevator state machine and troubleshoot it from there. Um, Let's just take a look at the function of this right now. The door is open and we have the door open light is on LED. So if I hit the close switch, which is button zero, that would be right there. That's going to close the elevator door. And when it hits that limit switch, uh, the elevator door is now closed. So if we look down at our light, you can see that the door closed light is now on and looking back up here if we go swing around over to our open switch and I hit the open switch that's going to open the elevator door and that is going to stop when it rests on the um, open limit switch and so we're cycling through the different states and if you notice the light is now back to door open and you know that's a simple state machine it's there's four state possibilities and it's just cycling through them um, at the push of a button closing the elevator door and opening the elevator door. So if you can get to that point, uh, that would be great. So, all right, thanks a lot and good luck.